All right, welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about Newton's method. And Newton's method is a technique that we can use to approximate the zeros or the x-intercepts of a function. And remember that the x-intercepts of a function are essentially where the function crosses the x-axis or where the y value is zero. So if you look at this graph right here, we have this function f of x and it has an x-intercept at this green point right here where it crosses the x-axis, right? At this point, the y value is zero. And so why do we need Newton's method, right? Because if you went through algebra, you know that we find the zeros of a function by setting the function equal to zero and solving for x. That's how we were taught to find the zeros. But sometimes you're going to come across functions where that's going to be difficult to do. Either you're not gonna be able to easily factor your function or you're just not going to have nice values for your zeros like you did in most problems, right? You would find that x is equal to one or x is equal to three, a very nice number that's easy to solve for. But in many cases, functions do not have nice x-intercepts. They're going to be numbers with a lot of decimals. And so Newton's method is going to allow us to approximate these more more difficult x-intercepts that we might not be able to find otherwise without using some fancy calculator. And so what we're going to do is I'm going to show you how Newton's method is derived or where the formula comes from, and then we'll show you how to use that formula for an example problem. And so if you're not interested in seeing where this formula comes from, feel free to use the chapters on this video to skip right to the example. But I highly recommend that you stay and see where the formula comes from because it might help you understand what you're doing as you use Newton's method. And so if we look at this function here, right, we want to approximate this x-intercept, this little green dot here. And so how are we going to do that? Well, we start by picking some value that we believe is close to the x value of where that x-intercept is. So if you look at our graph here, we have x1 labeled here, which is a point on the x-axis about right here, which is a little bit away from our actual x-intercept. But if we look to where that is on our function, it's right here at the point x1 and then x1 evaluated on our function. And so Newton's method is based on the assumption that for that point that we picked on our function, the tangent line at that point is going to cross the x-axis at the same point as the function. And so let me show you what I mean by that. If we were to draw a tangent line at that x value of x1 that was picked, we would see that it would cross the x-axis at about right here, right? This tangent line, which has the same slope as the point on the function here, right? At this point on this function, that is the slope. We just extended it. And so we can see that that tangent line crosses the x-axis at a point fairly close to where the actual x-intercept is, right? Where our actual function crosses the x-axis. And so this point right here, we would call x2. That would just be some other value of x that we have now found as a result of looking at this tangent line. And this would be our approximate value of what we believe to be our x-intercept. Obviously it's a little off, but let's write what this x2 is equal to, and then I'll show you how Newton's method is actually really cool in what it does. So in order to find what x sub two is gonna be equal to, let's write an equation that's going to represent this tangent line, and then we'll be able to find its zero, which would be x2, right? So here's what we'll do. We're going to use the point slope form for a linear equation, which hopefully you're familiar with. It looks like this. We have y minus y1 is equal to the slope m times x minus x1. Right, with this formula, we can take a point and plug its coordinates into x1 and y1 and find the equation of a line that goes through that point given the slope at that point. And so if we plug in what we know in this scenario, we know that our y1 value is going to be this, our function evaluated at x1. And so we're gonna have y minus f of x sub one. And that's gonna be equal to the slope times x minus x1. Well, what's the slope in this case? Well, we know from a calculus perspective that the slope at a point on the function is also the first derivative of the point on that function. And so the slope here is gonna be equal to f prime, or the first derivative of our function evaluated at x sub one, right? The slope at this point right here at x equals one on our function would be f prime of x1. And then this would be multiplied by x minus our value of x1, which is just x1. So we have x1. And so then if we were to add this term to both sides of the equation, we'll have that y is equal to f prime of x sub 1 times x minus x1 plus f of x1. And so now what we have right here is the equation of this tangent line right here, right? We have y equals these terms, and that's going to be the equation of this line. And so now if we set this equation equal to zero and solve for this value of x, we will find the x-intercept 
of this line. And so we'll see what that is going to be. And so if we do that, we'll have zero is equal. And so then I'm going to distribute this f prime of x1 in each part of this quantity. And so we'll have f prime of x1 times x, and then minus f prime of x1 times x1, and then plus this term right here. So we'll have plus f of x1. And so now if we move this term to the other side of the equation, right, we want to isolate this x. And so first we'll move this term to the other side. We'll have negative f prime of x1 times x is equal to negative f prime of x1 times x1 plus f of x1. And so then if we divide both sides by this negative f prime of x1, we'll find out what x is equal to. So we'll have x is equal to negative f prime of x1 times x1 plus f of x1 divided by negative f prime of x1. And so now if we clean up our work a little bit here, we can see what our x-intercept is equal to for this tangent line, right? This x2 is the same as this x, and so I'll actually write that little x2 right there. And so this is our x-intercept of our tangent line. But we can actually simplify this a little bit more because what we can do is we can split up this fraction into two parts. And so we'll have that x2 is equal to negative f prime of x1 times x1 divided by negative f prime of x1. And then we'll add that to f of x1 divided by negative f prime of x1, right? We just split up the numerator and kept the denominator for each part. And so then you'll notice that this term is in the numerator and the denominator, right? We have this negative f prime of x1 up here and down here in this term. And so we can cancel that out. And so then if we also bring this negative from down here out front, we then have that x2 is equal to x1 minus f of x1 divided by f prime of x1. And so what we find here is that if we want to find the x-intercept of the tangent line from the point that we picked on our function that's going to be close to our x-intercept of our actual function, then we just take that guess we had and then subtract the function evaluated at that value of x we picked and then the derivative of the function evaluated at that value of x that we picked. And so then what happens with Newton's method is we go through this whole process again. So if I clean up the work here real quick, we would be able to get an even better approximation by doing this process again for that new value of x we found, because this value of x is going to be closer than the first value of x that we picked, right? Because now we'd be looking at this function at this point, and then we'd be drawing another tangent line at that point, and then we would be finding the value of this x-intercept of this new tangent line using that value of x2 that we found, and so then this would become x3, and then we keep doing this process over and over again until we get really close to where this actual x-intercept is. Notice that we are closer with this point than we were with this point. And so this would be x3, and so x3 would then be equal to x2 minus f of x2 divided by f prime of x2. And so then we could do this again for another value of x sub 4, and that would be equal to x3 minus f of x2 three divided by f prime of x three. And so what happens here is as we keep getting these new values of x, they're going to be closer and closer to the actual x intercept. And so this is where Newton's method comes from and where we finally get our general form of the equation, which I will finally now show you and then we'll go ahead and use it. All right, so here's Newton's method and it's the same thing that we've been using but in a more generalized form. If we wanna find a value of x closer to our actual x intercept, x n plus one, we're going to take our previous value of x, starting with that first initial guess we have, and then subtract that value of x evaluated in our function, divided by that value of x evaluated on the derivative of our function. And so let's look at an example where we actually use this formula and approximate an x-intercept of a function. All right, so here's our example. We want to approximate the zero of the function until two successive approximations differ by less than 0 0.001. And this word zero here is the same thing as x-intercept. We're just trying to approximate the x-intercept, also known as the zeros of a function, which is a wording that you will see when working with Newton's method. You might also see the word root. We're looking for the root of our function. So just be aware that there are some different wordings for the x-intercepts of a function. And we'll talk about what this means once we start working with Newton's method here. And so here's our function. We have f of x equals x cubed minus x minus one. And so you can kind of see how this would normally be a difficult function to find the root of. 
this isn't going to easily be factorable, which means it's not going to be very easy to solve when you set the function equal to zero. So this is a good example of where we would actually want to use Newton's method. And so maybe the hardest part of a problem dealing with Newton's method is figuring out what your first guess is going to be, right? What is our value of x1 going to be equal to? What is our first guess for our x-intercept? And so what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to try to find a value that when you plug it into this function will give you a positive number. And then you're also going to want to plug in a value that's going to get you a negative value. And the reason we're going to do that is because if you go from a negative value to a positive value, then between those two values of x you plugged in, there must have been a point somewhere that hit zero, right? The function must have crossed the x-axis at some point. And so that's kind of the thinking behind that. We're looking for an area where our function crossed the x-axis so that we can kind of pick a value of x close to where the intercept will be. And so let's start by plugging in one into our function here. So we'll have f of one is equal to one cubed minus one minus one. And that's going to be equal to one cubed, which is one minus one, which would be zero, and then minus one would give us negative one. And so that's a negative value for our function. So if that's negative, let's try plugging in a bigger number. Let's try plugging in two and see if we get a positive result for our function. So I'll have f of two is equal to two cubed minus two minus one. And what's that going to be equal to? Well, two cubed is equal to eight, minus two would be six, and then minus one would give us five. And so our answer is positive five, and so our value switched from being negative for one to being positive for two. And so that means in between x equals one and x equals two, our function must have hit the value of zero. There must have been an x-intercept between these two values. And so our first guess is just gonna be 1.5. I'm gonna pick a value right between one and two, and so our x1 will be 1.5. That is going to be our first guess at what our x-intercept is for this function. And so then this is where Newton's method comes in. Remember we said that for Newton's method, x sub n plus one is going to be equal to x sub n minus the function evaluated at x sub n divided by the derivative evaluated at the value of x sub n. And so before we go through with this method, the first thing we need to do is find the derivative of our function. And so if we do that, we know that f prime of x is going to be equal to the exponent here, three multiplied down, and then we'll subtract one from it. So we'll have three x squared and then a derivative of negative x is going to be negative one, and a derivative of negative one is zero. And so this is going to be our derivative in this case. And so if we go back to Newton's method here, we can now create a formula that's going to work for each of our iterations. And I think I forgot to mention this earlier, but every time you use this formula, we call that an iteration. So the first thing we're going to be doing is we're going to look for x2, which would be our second best guess, and then we'll continue to find x3, and x4 and so on until we hit this requirement up here, which again, I'll let you know when we get there. And so what we can do is we can rewrite Newton's method to look like this. We can say that x sub n plus one is equal to x sub n minus, and then let's plug in x sub n into our function. And so we'll have x sub n cubed minus x sub n minus one. And then in the denominator, we have our derivative. And if we plug x sub n into our derivative, we'll have three times x sub n squared minus one. And so before we use this formula, I wanna clean up my work a little bit here so I have some space to do the rest of this work. All right, so I cleaned up my work a little bit. And so now we have our formula up here and then we have our function, its derivative, and our first guess of x sub one equals 1 1.5. And so let's go ahead and use this to find x sub two. And so if we do that, we'll have x sub two is equal to x sub one, right? Because x sub two is n plus one, right? If n plus one is equal to two, then that means that n must be one, right? Because one plus one is equal to two. So that means this will be x sub one, and then we'll be subtracting that value of x sub one substituted in for each x sub n in this formula, right? So we're gonna have 1.5 cubed minus 1.5 minus one divided by three times 1.5 squared minus one. And then of course, let's change this x one to 1.5 as well. All right, so now if we were to go through and evaluate this, this would be equal to 1.5 minus 0 0.875 divided by 5.75, right? So if you plug this into your calculator, you'll get 0 0.875. And if you plug this into your calculator, you're going to get 5.75. And so then if you divide this value by this value and subtract it from 1.5, you will get that x sub two is going to approximately be equal to 1.348.
and I did round that off a little bit. And so maybe now's a good time to stress this, but when you're using Newton's method, you're going to want to have a calculator nearby because you're going to be working with approximate values and they're not very easy to deal with by hand. And so make sure you have a calculator ready to go here. Okay, and so now that we know that x2 is approximately equal to 1.348, we can now find our approximation for x3. And so let's do that. And so x sub 3 is going to be equal to x sub 2 minus x sub 2 plugged into this formula, just like we did when we found x sub 2 by plugging x sub 1 into this formula. We're going to do the same thing for x sub 2. And so if we do that, we'll have 1.348 cubed minus 1.348 minus 1. And then on the bottom, we'll have 3 times 1.348 squared minus 1. And then if we change this x sub 2 to its value of 1.348 and then plug this whole calculation into our calculator, you will find that x sub 3 is going to be equal to 1.325. All right, and so now we have an even better approximation of what our x-intercept is going to be for this function. But now notice that we want to keep doing this until two successive approximations differ by less than 0 0.001. So here's where this comes into play. If we were to subtract this value from this value, we would get a value greater than 0 0.001, right? So we want to do this again until this third decimal point is the same. And so let's clean up our work a little bit here and let's find x sub four. All right, so I cleaned our work up a little bit. So we have our first guess, our first approximation, and our second approximation. And now let's try to find our third approximation, or x sub four. And so x sub four is going to be equal to x sub three plugged into this formula. And so if we take this value of 1.325 and plug it into this formula, we'll have 1.325 minus 1.325 cubed minus 1.325 minus one. And then we'll divide this by three times 1.325 squared minus one. And so then if we were to plug this into our calculator and subtract it from 1.325, and I'll even help you out this time, I'll tell you that this up here is going to be equal to 0 0.00206. And this down here in the denominator will be equal to 4.26847. If we were to divide this value by this value and subtract it from our approximation for x sub three, and by the way, remember to save these values in your calculator, right? Don't round off and then use them in your calculation. Try to use the actual entire value, all the decimals. Only round it off when you're writing in your work. Try not to do that in your calculator. But if we were to do that, we would find that x4 would approximately be equal to 1.325, which differs by less than 0 0.001 to our approximation for x sub 3, right? These actually look the same because I didn't show more of the decimals, but they aren't the exact same value, but they differ by less than 0 0.001. And so we can stop and say that our final approximation for the x-intercept or the zero of our function here is 1.325. That is our approximate value for the x-intercept. And so that's how you use Newton's method. All right, so that's all I had for this lesson video. If you wanna see some more examples where we go through and use Newton's method, I'll have an example video linked at the end of this video, as well as in the description below. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. But if you don't have any questions, this is all I have for now. So I will see you next time.